In space engineers, there are many different ways of producing power. Wind turbines, solar panels, hydrogen engines, reactors, and batteries. But throughout the years, people have asked which one is better than the other, and which one is the king over them all. I'm Alice, and today we will be taking a look at all the power generation methods in space engineers, as well as rank them from worst to best. Before we begin, let's lay down some ground rules. The ranking will be based on a number of factors, but mainly these four. The resource cost, the per block power output, the fuel consumption, and versatility. We will also be only comparing the large grid blocks and not the small grid ones, and all world settings will be stock. So without further ado, let's get right into it. To begin with, let's start with what is considered by most to be the underdog of passive power generation, the solar panel. The solar panel is one of the most underrated ways of generating power in space engineers. A large grid solar panel weighs in at 471.4 kilos and has a maximum output of 160 kilowatts and takes up a space of 2 by 1 by 4 blocks. This means that it has an output of roughly 20 kilowatts per block of space it uses. The solar panel comes with the upside that it is double-sided, meaning it can generate power when the sun faces either side, whilst also not needing an atmosphere and being able to be used on mobile grids. And with the cheap resource cost of 90 iron ingots, 84 silicon wafers and 32 nickel ingots, the solar panel can be constructed in a survival kit to an operational level but requires a basic assembler to be fully constructed. What really boosts the solar panel further into the ranking, however, is the new feature in the custom turret controller, always aim at sun. This means that the solar panel can always have its maximum output when attached to a solar array. This also works with multiple panels, making it more versatile than in the past. Overall, it's a great source of power for a very low resource cost, and with the option to construct large solar arrays with a high energy output, but in turn does require more setup and additional costs in order to make such an array, in addition not being able to generate a large amount of power per solar panel. With all of this in mind, the solar panel lands in C tier. Next up is the wind turbine, what most considers to be the de facto winner in passive power generation. A single wind turbine weighs in at 616 kilograms and has a maximum output of 371 kilowatts under optimal conditions, all whilst taking up a space of 3x3x3 three by three by three blocks. This gives it an output of roughly 13.7 kilowatts per block of space it uses. However, if the wind turbine is in stormy conditions, the max output can be pushed up to 620 kilowatts, which means roughly 22.9 kilowatts per block of space it uses. The wind turbine has a similar cost to the solar panel, however being slightly cheaper, with a cost of 195 iron ingots, 13 nickel ingots, and 0.13 silicon wafers, the wind turbine can be made using a survival kit. The wind turbine has some advantages over solar panels, like being able to run 24-7, but there are some caveats. The wind turbine needs to be in an atmosphere to function and has to be on a static grid, in addition to having different conditions and requirements for its power output. For instance, if the wind turbine is not elevated and sits right on the surface of your base, it'll only generate around 212 kilowatts of output and be under poor conditions. This number gets even lower if the wind turbine is in a low O2 environment, pushing it down to as low as 153 kilowatts of output. This amount will increase for every block in height you build, but you still need to build 7 blocks upwards to generate 371 kilowatts under optimal conditions and 268 kilowatts in a low O2 environment. Oh, and did I also mention that placing wind turbines directly next to each other decreases their maximum output? Each wind turbine needs to be 8 blocks apart from their center in order to not lose any max output. 
all in all, the wind turbine is a cost-effective way of generating a large amount of power in the early game, but with its varying conditions and strict requirements for optimal power output, as well as its large size, low versatility, and being hard to scale, the wind turbine unfortunately lands in D tier. Last of the passive power generation blocks is the battery. With the large grade battery weighing in at 4845 kilograms, making it the heaviest, and with a maximum output of 12 megawatts, it only takes up a 1x1x1 block of space. This gives it the second best output to block ratio on this whole ranking, while also being one of the cheapest blocks. With a cost of 911 iron ingots, 28 silicon wafers, and 53 nickel ingots, the battery can be made using a basic assembler. Whilst the battery doesn't generate power on its own, after being constructed, the battery has 30% of its maximum charge, meaning you get 900 kilowatt hours of power essentially for free. This did make it one of the best methods of generating power in the past. In the present, however, whenever you grind a battery down, all the power cells get turned into scrap metal, meaning you have to make 80 new power cells to make a new battery. But the battery has one main function, storing power. The battery won't work great on its own, but works perfectly when it is paired with one of the other power sources. It can store up to 3 megawatt hours of power, which gives it plenty of runtime. In addition, the battery doesn't require any forms of conveyoring, making it perfect for being placed all across a ship or base. Overall, the battery is by far the most versatile block on this list both being able to store power and coming with 30% charge when first constructed, as well as having the second highest output per block ratio, and in addition to not needing any conveying, all whilst being the heaviest block on this list, and being unable to generate power itself. With all of that in mind though, the battery lands in S tier. Now let's move on to the active power generation blocks. What I mean with active is that they require fuel in order to generate power, like uranium or hydrogen. Speaking of hydrogen, next up is the hydrogen engine, one of the most disliked ways of generating power in space engineers. A single large grid hydrogen engine weighs in at 3,253 kilograms and has a max output of 5 megawatts and takes up a space of 1 by 1 by 2 blocks. This results in the hydrogen engine having a per block output of 2.5 megawatts, and with a cost of 1,124 iron ingots, 21 nickel ingots, and 0.6 silicon wafers, the hydrogen engine can be made using a basic assembler. The hydrogen engine has two conveyor ports, one being at the very back and one being at the bottom front, making it an elongated L-shape. In order for the hydrogen engine to work, it requires hydrogen as fuel, which comes from ice. The hydrogen engine can hold a maximum of 100,000 liters of hydrogen and uses 500 liters per second when generating its max output of 5 megawatts. This means the hydrogen engine will last 3 minutes and 20 seconds on its own fuel. However, its storage capacity can be increased with the use of hydrogen tanks. If you have a full hydrogen tank, the hydrogen engine can generate 5 megawatts for roughly 8 hours and 20 minutes. Though, with the dependency of hydrogen tanks, it does lower its versatility slightly. At the same time, if your ship does use hydrogen thrusters and consumes a low amount of energy, the hydrogen engine is a perfect fit. Whilst we are talking about hydrogen, we need to talk about obtaining hydrogen versus obtaining uranium. Using a simple drill test, we can see that for every one kilogram of uranium, you get 16 kilograms of ice. In addition, ice is more common, being present on all eight planets and moons in the star system scenario. I mean, two of them are practically made of ice. Meanwhile, uranium can only be found in asteroids. Next, I set up one O2H2 generator and one stock refinery to see which would generate the respective fuel the fastest and most efficiently. Here I used 16,000 kilograms of ice and 1,000 kilograms of uranium ore. 
the O2H2 generator was able to refine the ice into 320,000 liters of hydrogen in 10 minutes and 40 seconds, whilst only using 81 kilowatt hours of power. Meanwhile, the refinery took 17 minutes and 49 seconds to refine the 1,000 kilograms of uranium ore into 10 ingots, whilst using 167 kilowatts of power. Overall, refining ice into hydrogen is nearly twice as fast and more than double as power efficient compared to refining uranium. On the other hand, when it comes to using up the hydrogen and uranium we have refined, the hydrogen engine used up the 320,000 liters in 10 minutes and 41 seconds under a full load. Meanwhile, the reactor used up the 10 uranium ingots in 39 minutes and 45 seconds. With that in mind, let's get back to the ranking. Overall, the hydrogen engine is a cheap and easy way of generating large amounts of power from early game to even late game with a very cheap fuel source and refining process, as well as its conveyor layout providing great versatility. But its high fuel consumption and need for hydrogen tanks to store additional hydrogen does drag it down a bit. At the same time, if you want to go to space, it is a guarantee that you will expand ice and hydrogen production anyway, resulting in plenty of fuel for the hydrogen engine. So in the end, the hydrogen engine lands in A tier. Finally, we have arrived at the two considered kings of power, the small and large reactor. We will start with the small reactor. The small reactor weighs a total of 4,793 kilos, making it the second heaviest, and with a maximum power output of 15 megawatts. Whilst only taking up a 1x1x1 blocks worth of space, this gives it the highest output per block ratio out of this whole ranking. Whilst the reactor is expensive, it is not much more expensive than some of our other contenders, like the battery or hydrogen engine. With a cost of 1,307 iron ingots, 17 nickel ingots, 4 cobalt ingots, 667 gravel, 167 silver ingots, and 2 silicon wafers, the small reactor can only be made using a normal assembler, making this more of an endgame block. It's even more of an endgame block when considering its fuel source. With the reactors requiring uranium to function, you will need to have reached space in order to acquire such. The small reactor has two conveyor ports forming an L-shape, making it perfect for replacing conveyor corners. All whilst the reactor has a great fuel efficiency, with 10 kilograms of uranium ingots lasting roughly 40 minutes whilst under maximum load. All in all, the small reactor has a high maximum output and per block output, in addition to good conveyor versatility. However, the reactor is still fairly expensive and will be difficult to fuel until the very end of the game. With all of that in mind, the small reactor lands behind the hydrogen engine in A tier. Last but not least, we have the large reactor, the biggest and beefiest of them all. The large reactor has a weight of 72,295 kilograms with a maximum up power output of 300 megawatts, making it the block with the highest overall power output, all whilst taking up a 3x3x3 blocks worth of space. This gives the large reactor a per block power output of 11.1 megawatts, making it the third highest coming right behind the battery. With this being the biggest and most powerful of the power blocks, it is of course the most expensive. With a cost of 18,226 iron ingots, 100 nickel ingots, 40 cobalt ingots, 67 gold ingots, 13,333 gravel, 3,333 silver ingots, and 5 silicon wafers, the large reactor can only be made using a normal assembler. The large reactor has four conveyor ports in the form of a cross, making it perfect for creating four-way junctions. And whilst the reactor has a lower power per block output, it is still more efficient building a single large reactor from a resource standpoint instead of 27 small reactors, with it costing significantly less, 
whilst weighing a lot less at the same time. Despite all of these advantages, it is the most endgame block of them all, and suffers from the same issues as the small reactor, with the need for uranium. Additionally, the large reactor is not any more efficient than the small reactor, and only has a bigger maximum output. In the end, the large reactor has the greatest power output and one of the best weight to block ratios. However, due to its large size and significant resource cost, whilst also suffering from the same uranium issues as the small reactor, it is not better than its younger brother overall, even with its advantages. With all of this in mind, the large reactor lands in B tier. And with that, we have our final ranking, with the wind turbine performing the worst in D tier, and with the battery sitting comfortably as the king in S tier. Keep in mind this is just one way of ranking these blocks. There are many variables you need to keep in mind, like your starting scenario, if you are using custom settings, mods, so on so forth. There are many ways of ranking all these blocks, but the most important thing is to pick what fits your needs and your builds. But let me know what you think. How would you rank these different blocks? Leave your ranking in the comments below. This video did take a lot of time and effort to make, so hitting that like button would be greatly appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!